0322, call dispatch. 0322, go ahead. 0322, I have a call for you. You're attending code 4 to Story Art Center, 951 Carlaw Avenue. A male patient in his early 20s is possibly in seizure at this location. We're still waiting for more information. 0322, 10 we are en route. Zero three two two, we're on scene. Zero three two two, ten four. Any number of things could have caused this patient's seizure. Low glucose in the blood, a head injury, a brain injury, a brain tumor, although this is rare, an alcohol-related event, drug-related event, or epilepsy. Because of the limited information that we have about this patient, we won't actually know what the problem is until we make patient contact and assess the situation further. Where are we going? Down the hall. So what happened? I have no idea. I called 911 right away. Ideally, we get verbal consent from a patient. However, if they're unconscious, we go for implied consent. The first step is then to get the patient's ABCs. First, we check and see if a patient's airway is obstructed. If it's unobstructed, then we move on to the next assessments. He has a pulse, but his breathing is shallow and slow. We're going to need to assist him with a BBM. Whenever we have a patient who's not breathing or who's breathing ineffectively, like in our case with our patient breathing too slowly, we use something called a bag valve mask, a BVM, to help get oxygen into the lungs. Do you know this guy? Has he been like this the entire time? Did you move him at all? This is how I found him. So we placed the mask over the patient's face. We put it over the nose and the mouth, using the index finger and the thumb to keep it in place. Using the remaining three fingers in the C and E configuration, we lift the jaw into the mask in what we call a jaw thrust maneuver. We want to make sure that the patient's airways are open, so that's why we use that jaw thrust maneuver. You have to allow for exhalation. Let the breath come out, just like in normal breathing. So it's great, we got his breathing under control. However, we still don't know what caused this. When we lack information, we rely on our assessments and our diagnostic tests to create a treatment plan. Next, we do a rapid body survey. This involves palpating the patient to find any life-threatening injuries. Sometimes, in our rapid body survey, we find the root of the problem. For instance, a head injury. 
If we find an injury that needs immediate intervention, then we treat it right away. Because our rapid body survey didn't reveal the root of the problem, we have to move on to more assessments. We can put an SpO2 onto the patient's finger to assess the level of oxygen in their blood. We can also put on a blood pressure cuff to assess the patient's blood pressure. Or we can put on a cardiac monitor to assess the patient's heart function. Whenever a patient's pupils present pinpoint, we ask ourselves, are we dealing with a drug overdose? Guys, this is what I found. Okay. So we might now have an idea as to why this patient might be unresponsive. It might be due to an opioid overdose, something such as fentanyl, morphine, heroin, so what we do is we administer a drug called naloxone to help reverse these effects. So it counteracts the opioid overdose. Can you check this medication for me? It's uh, naloxone. And the expiry? Next December. Naloxone, not expired. Administering an injection involves a number of steps. Once you confirm you have the right medication, take the top off of the vial and wipe the rubber top with an alcohol swab. Hold the syringe in your hand with a capped blunt needle pointed up. Pull back the plunger on the syringe to the dose line. This fills the syringe with air. Insert the blunt needle into the rubber top and push the air into the vial. This prevents a vacuum from forming as you withdraw the medication. Turn the vial upside down and hold it in the air. Make sure that you keep the blunt tip in the medication. Pull back on the plunger to a point just beyond your intended dose, still keeping the syringe tip in the medication. Gently tap the syringe to move the air bubbles to the top, then push back on the plunger to get the air back into the vial. Make sure that you still have the right amount of medication drawn up. Remove the syringe from the vial and dispose of the blunt needle. Can you confirm the amount? 0 0.4. There's something called the five rights that we have to check off before we can give any medication. That's ensuring that we have the right patient, the right medication, the right dose, we're giving it the right way, and we're doing it at the right time. Once all five of these things are in order, then we can go ahead. Use a needle that's long enough to reach into the patient's muscle. Identify the thickest part of the patient's muscle. Then have the patient relax their arm and proceed. Ensure the skin is clean and follow local policy on skin cleansing. Rub the alcohol swab on the selected site in a circular motion, starting at the innermost and working towards the outermost area. Swab the site for 15 to 30 seconds with isopropyl alcohol, then wait for the site to dry.
Secure the injection needle to the syringe. Hold the syringe in your dominant hand and using your other hand, gently stretch the skin of the site. This displaces the subcutaneous tissue and aids in needle insertion. Insert the needle at a 90 degree angle in a quick dart-like action. This prevents any accidental depression of the plunger during insertion. Inject the medication into the muscle. Then dispose of the needle and syringe directly into the sharps container. Massage the injection site and apply a Band-Aid. Note what medication was administered as well as the dosage, where on the body it was administered and at what time. Naloxone acts to reverse the effects of an opioid overdose, usually within about a minute or two. One of the first signs we see is a patient's breathing returning to normal. His breathing stabilized. Okay. We still have to get the patient up onto the stretcher and to the hospital. To do this, we perform a fore and aft lift. One of us grabs the patient's wrists and pulls up on the arms. The other lifts the patient's head. The same paramedic slides their arms under the patient's armpits and grabs their wrists. The other paramedic grabs under the patient's knees. Once we get the patient up onto the stretcher, we reassess. This means repeating our initial assessments. We leave the scene the same way that we arrived, one paramedic pulling at the foot end and the other one pushing at the head end. Are you good to go? Good to go. 0322, we're on route. 0322, 10-4.